Prima Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Amit Singh, the co-head of energy finance at Nedbank CIB. Amit, it's great to chat to you. What were the key insights that emerged from Nedbank CIB's recent energy and mining event? Thanks, Martin. So as part of a regular event and the parallels of the mining in Daba and Cape Town, we have, as a bank, have come to appreciate the role of the energy sector in mining. And over the last decade, we've been having this parallel sessions where we bring thought leaderships from both the mining sector and the energy sector and bring them into a common platform. And over the years, there's been many topics, and I think the most contemporary one has been the role of the mining sector in energy transition and sustainability, and their path to net zero. We all know energy is a big part of any mining operation, so a critical component for them to get net zero is to get the transition in the energy, uh, the power needs of their mines. So what we've done this year, we have took a very important topic. We've discussed a very unique aggregator structure, a structure where we have many IPPs, independent power producers, selling to one aggregator or one platform. It's not traders in the real sense because they don't sell over the counter or over the hour, but they, we've collectively called them traders in South Africa. They license as a trader and they take the power from multiple sources and sell it to multiple off takers. So it's many power projects selling to one buyer who on turn sells it to many mines. So that is the structure we discussed today at our mining session at the during the mining endeavor. Why it was important session, we as a bank feel that it's going to be an important tool or financial tool or platform to accelerate the energy transition in the mining sector, where more mines can really contract with this aggregator or this uh, this platform and on, on different basis, some short term, long term, more flexible. It will be much easier, quicker procurement, and that will really in turn give them the energy transition. So this is a new structure that's emerging in the market, and we thought we would give it a lot of attention because we think it can really accelerate the requirements of the mines to get their energy from green electrons. Why is energy transformation and the shift towards clean energy such a pressing issue in Africa's mining industry in general and South Africa's mining industry in particular? So I think that's an important question. I, the world has known the impact of carbon and the role of decarbonizing and cleaning up the world and the environment. You know, the two degrees of global warming, it's something, it's a reality, you just look around you. But in South Africa, it's a bit more, uh, has a different uh, context because the mines are dependent on our national utility and they are mostly generation from coal bases. So it's not uh, renewable. In terms of ESCOMs or their utilities, tariff escalation, we'll start with a few points. Firstly, the tariff escalation. We all know what tariff increases these utilities have been, our regulators awarded our utility and it's really much above inflation, two, three times sometimes. And it's really a match a black box that comes out. And these mines cannot really manage these costs on such an aggressive basis. So when they procure from independent power producers, they sign long-term contracts with the sets inflation, normally it's CPI. So it's much more even and it matches the, the commodity prices in many instances, right? So there's, it helps them to bring being a least cost miner. The second thing, to export your goods around the world, it's almost the new license is that you the carbon border taxes. You might come to understand that to be competitive in this mining sector, to get the minerals out to the to most parts of Europe and Americas, you really need to ensure that your whole manufacturing or mining cycle has uh, least carbon impact and renewable energy plays a big part of that. So secondly, to be carbon, uh, to, to manage the competitiveness of the mine in terms of the carbon water tax. And the third thing is these mining companies, you know, we're so happy to see that they want to do good and they want to ensure it's the right thing to do is to decarbonize their operations. And it's really coming from a very sincere base. So there's lots of motives and reasons why they are doing it. And then if you look at the continent in Africa, most of the mines are connected to diesel gensets. And we know the cost of diesel and what he's doing. And we are seeing that, for example, solar with battery and the cost costs have come down significant. It's one of the least cost producers. And with battery prices also coming down, this can give them almost a little bit of a base load profile. So to reduce the diesel consumption, diesel generators, which is really expensive, the solar and batteries and renewable is a, one of the important substitute for them.
And what local and global financial assistance is there for mining companies needing to go green and clean in the energy space? Yeah, that's also a very good question. In South Africa, and, and we can talk about South Africa and the rest of the continent. So I just like, in South Africa, there's big activity in the energy sector. There's so many projects. We have government procurement. We've got big mining house procuring from independent produ power producers. We've got large industrial users. And what we've seen over the last 10 to 15 years from the sector when it took off the private generation uh, is that there's sufficient liquidity from the South African financial institutions, be it the banks, be it the funds, be it the development financial institutions, there's sufficient rent liquidity for this long-term lending. So it's really no shortage of money for them to procure or for generators to borrow money to online sell to these mines. In the continent, where we need hard currency, we've also seen huge support from the international development financial institutions. Many of them have committed large amounts of funds and hard currency to fund these projects. So they are also being very active in the, the European DFIs, be it American DFIs, uh, together with the South African financial institutions. The hard currency lending is also sufficient liquidity to do that. Uh, so there's no shortage of money for this. And how successful was your energy in mining panel discussion yeah. in delving deeper into the nuances of sustainable energy solutions and their impact on the future of mining? So the event was, the auditorium was full. In fact, there was a comment from the, one of the members of the auditorium that next year we're going to book the town hall in Cape Town. <laughs> but that's the amount of interest we had, uh, both from uh, financial institutions, uh, IPPs, mines. It was really full. And the discussions was really important to go in detail on, for example, the mechanisms of this aggregator model. How can it accelerate it? How does the returns impact on IPPs? Because they also need to make a return. Do banks have uh, credit appetite for these structures? Uh, would mines prefer to buy from an aggregator or directly from an IPP? So all those questions were addressed. And the discussions from about 10 panelists we had from across the field, from mining, from IPPs, from lenders. And even we had a representative from who started trying to sell power to the South African Power Pool. And she, African Green Co., she was also there. And she also has ambitions, for example, for projects outside the borders of South Africa to be able to sell to mines within South Africa to the South African Power Pool. So the discussion was really interesting. It was almost two hours, and no one left the auditorium for the entire duration. So it was a fantastic event. And I think. It left many people with the concept of the role of aggregators can play, and they are. In fact, we've seen many queries coming to us now. How can this be an important part? Who are the aggregators in South Africa that are operating? So people are thinking about this in a more serious light. And what, in your view, should be the biggest takeaway from this interview that we're doing right now? Yes, the sector is very, very excited, and it's full of energy, uh, mind the pun. Uh, everyone wants to make a difference. Uh, as I said, there, there, there's a commercial sense to this transition, but I think the hearts of people in the mines and the bankers and the, and the IPPs that the impact of renewables will do for the future generations. And I think everyone understands it and, and really they want to do more. The appetite is there, the equity is there, the debt is there, the, the demand from mines are there, and it's just to make it happen now. So. Yeah, to, to leave the uh, conclude the event was that I think everyone during our cocktail event was continued the discussions and all felt that this is more than an opportunity. It's really an important requirement or need of South Africa that we have to do. And and I think another theme that also was discussed in there is that through our energy transition, we can almost help South Africa's energy security. That was also an important message. That was Krima Media's Mining Weekly, interviewing Amit Singh, the co-head of energy finance at Medbank CIB.